Okay, hi there. Welcome to the second in a little twin series of videos thinking about how we can use analysis diagrams to show some of the possible gains from specialization and trade. In the previous video, we looked at uh, the gains from trade from a PPF perspective. This time we'll look at supply and demand in the market for timber and think about what might happen if you open up a market, if you liberalize trade to imports of timber from overseas where other countries can produce timber perhaps at a lower marginal cost. So here's our market. We have uh, the price of timber on the y-axis, the output, the quantity of timber on the x-axis. Quite important in this analysis to draw your demand and supply curves to the y-axis, especially when we come to look at welfare. In the absence of trade, if uh, if UK timber suppliers, forestry, for example, in Derbyshire or Northumberland, if they were just supplying to the UK market only, uh, and if there was a demand for timber from construction companies and from uh, DIY stores, etc., the equilibrium price would be PT1, QT1 in the absence of trade. Uh, and that, that is the idea of a kind of closed economic system where no trade takes place. I'm going to assume that timber can in fact be bought at a a lower world price because other countries perhaps have a comparative advantage. They have a cheaper marginal cost of supplying timber to other countries. So I've deliberately drawn the world supply price below the domestic price. Can you see the difference there? There's quite a big gap between PT1 and the world supply. Now, one of the key features of trade is that trade creates competition, creates a increase intensive competition between suppliers and I'm going to make a working assumption that UK timber suppliers can no longer charge PT1 for their timber but in fact they might have to price at or around the prevailing world price shown by the green line. Effectively they become a kind of price taker in the market. Well what are the consequences? Well if, if we now trade at the world price domestic production may contract from QT1 down to S1. So there's a contraction down the domestic supply curve because they can no longer get the same price per tonne of timber. Uh, domestic consumers, however, construction firms, for example, well, they're now able to buy their timber at a reduced price and, they, and that allows them to expand their demand. They can move down their demand curve from QT1 to D1. So demand expands to a higher level. Now the consequence is, or one, one result is, that there is quite a sizable proportion of timber demand met by imports. So demand is D1, domestic production is S1 on the x-axis there. The gap, S1, D1, represents the quantity or volume of imports. And in this, in this situation, you can see that imports might well dominate the total supply of timber in the UK economy. So what about the gains from trade? Well, one way of thinking about the gains or the welfare consequences of trade is to consider concepts that you may well have come across in theme one, your microeconomics from year one, namely consumer surplus, a measure of consumer welfare, and producer surplus, a measure of producer welfare. So let's think about it. I've deliberately labeled some key points here. So we'll work through this together piece by piece and see what the consequences are for welfare. First of all, think about consumer surplus. Well, consumer surplus without trade at the price PT1, that's equal to the area A, B, G, the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. Consumer surplus without trade is A, B, G. However, if you can now buy your timber more cheaply, uh, then the level of consumer surplus after trade increases to A, C, D, a big area underneath the demand curve, outputs higher, Prices lower, consumer surplus goes up. So you can see there's an increase of G, B, C, D of consumer surplus. What about producers? Well, producers, without trade, selling at price PT1, they would have had consumer surplus of G, B, E, that triangle. But of course, with trade, that brings down their pricing power. They can only produce S1 at the world price so they have a level of producer surplus equal to D, F, E. Of that, area G, D, F, B, G, D, F, B has been transferred from the producer to the consumer. So there's a welfare gain 
transfer, if you like, to from producers to consumers because tin has become less expensive. Overall, taking as a whole, we can show in this diagram that free trade leads to an increase in welfare because we can use a concept known as community surplus where we sum up consumer and producer surplus together. So the total area of, uh, of consumer and producer surplus is A, C, F, E and the net gain is the area F, B, C. So we can show that under certain circumstances trade by lowering the price leads to an increase in consumer welfare. I'm aware that there are some caveats here. For example, what will happen to jobs in the timber industry? Well, you know, if people are made unemployed in timber, can they easily, can the factors of production used in the UK timber sector and they can easily be switched to other industries with no loss of income and, and, uh, and profit, for example? I'm, I'm assuming here that the UK producers do just passively accept the world price. Of course, they may not necessarily do that. I'm assuming here that demand and supply curves are linear. Uh, oftentimes they're not. They said there's a lot of simplifying assumptions in this model to be aware of. Transportation costs of timber, fr trade friction costs, all that kind of stuff. But in theory, in theory, we can show that trade by opening up a market, if other countries can specialise in things in which they can produce at relatively cheaper cost, in theory, we can show there's a welfare gain. And this is the kind of analysis diagram that would certainly score well in A-level. It's also the diagram if you've, if you've done tariffs and things that allows you straight away to start thinking about what would happen if we put an import tariff on the world supply price. Once you've done tariffs, you'd be very able quickly to, to draw the tariff diagram to show the effects. OK, well, thank you very much for working through this example with me. Theoretical model, but hopefully useful if you get a question on the gains from trade. Thank you.